Okay, good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, we're going to uh, look at some things that we were discussing on Thursday and that we ended our study with. And uh, before we begin, can we have a word of prayer together? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful that we can be here uh, this morning to open your word together. Um, we know that there are things that we've been grappling with, and we believe that you have given us light uh, to help us to understand these lines more thoroughly. We know that this week is um, a week for the midterm elections in the United States, and that many people have uh, a prophetic um, understanding of what's going to happen, that they believe will happen. We just ask, Lord, that we can understand clearly how the time that we are in is connected uh, to the prophecies of Scripture. Help us to trust in you fully. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning again, everyone. Now, when we were fin finished our study, well, the study on Thursday, uh, Dwight had asked a question about the formalization uh, the arrival and the formalization and empowerment of the message. And Dwight, could you kind of articulate what that question was, what you were thinking at the time? Well, <clears throat> there seemed to be an arrival and then a formalization of the message that was being given to Gideon that was then given to the people of the town where he lived. Mm -hmm. Now, they became very direct supporters of what Gideon was doing. And some of that we would see from the spirit of prophecy. Gideon was of the tribe of Manasseh. So this is not a tribe that you would expect to be providing a prophetic message, but it's one that God could use because of Gideon's humility. But where Gideon had to begin with this, he had to begin with his family first. Because as Sister White wrote, Gideon's family was severely infected with idolatry. And I'm using you know kind of a paraphrase there. Yeah. I can I can pull back up the, the actual article here in just a second. No, but we're familiar with what she says. Okay. Yeah. But if if Gideon had not started with his family, the message that he was about to give was not going to go out with any power. Mm -hmm. So my thought process was this. <clears throat> if, if this is representational of a message specifically related to July 18th, then is it possible that we are again repeating this situation with Gideon that the movement had been infected with idolatry to some level and that the movement needed to have that idolatry removed in order for this message to be taken seriously? Yeah, well, I think that's pretty clear. I'm not sure how the arrival of formalization has to do with this, though. Well, the message arrived with Gideon, with a person, right? Yeah, and we have that in every line, so we would have an arrival and a formalization. But your okay. idea is that the arrival is chapter 6, the formalization is chapter 7, the requirements chapter 8, or something like that. 
Well, I think we're going to see the arrival and formalization clearly with what happens within Gideon's family first. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see the formalization continue with the 300 in chapter seven mm -hmm. and its empowerment with what he hears when he and his and his armor bearer go down into the Midianite camp or by the Midianite camp. Okay. So, so you, you know, you felt that you were led to ask the question. So right. on Thursday, Thursday night, you know, cause I thought about it during the day, of course I was relatively busy, but as I was walking home in the 15 minutes it takes to walk home, um, I, I started recognizing, you know, why you would ask the question. But I think what I saw is that Judges chapter six, the unique of particular nation states and the people thought that, that that Judges chapter six focuses upon November eleventh, two thousand nineteen. All right. Chapter seven focuses upon July eighteenth, and Judges chapter eight uh, zooms in to December twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. Because what we have, I mean, we have a line. So the, each line that we have is going to have an arrival of formalization and empowerment of, of that message. And, and every line is also going to have a first and a second angel's message, right? When you, when you take a line, it's going to be a three-step testing prophetic message. Every line will represent the same, same thing. So you, we're going to have a line in the story of Gideon. But the question was, you know, how do we construct that line? Right. And and so it seems to me that each of these chapters is a line in and of itself. Because what it is, is each chapter in this line that we have of Gideon. Each of these these chapters is a zoom into a line above it. And the line above it, then. Is this line that we have in the story of the judges itself. So the story of the judges we, we have shown is illustrating from 2001 to 2023, based upon our understanding of chapter two. So we, we've entered into this study of judges, of placing it upon a line, seeing that judges is showing specifically events in this movement. Doesn't mean that judges can't be applied to a bigger line, because any line il illustrates any other line. Every, all those lines are typical Right. So they're, they're types showing us uh, every other line. Right. So we can make an application of judges that would be larger than that. But for us at the movement at this time, we're taking the story of judges that it is illustrating what is presently happening in the movement and what has happened already and what's going to happen because it's leading us to 2023. And. <clears throat> But the question had to be is where we place these lines. How do we construct these lines? So if we take our bigger line, because we do have a line that goes from 2001 to, uh, to the future, that bigger line, I mean, that goes to the Sunday law, right? So 9-11. And Jeff, remember, when he zoomed in, he took 9-11 to the Sunday law, right? That's, that's with the midnight and the midnight cry. That's the line we're looking at. That's... The second angel's message part of the line, because we have from 1989 to 9-11, but we have this other line that is repeating the second angel's message. That's repeating Millerite history from April 19th to October 22nd. So now we have the story of Gideon. We have all these stories and judges, and they're illustrating this bigger line, this line of the second angel. Right since 9-11 to the Sunday Law. So this is a zoom into the Sunday Law way mark on Ellen White's line. But when we look at that zoom in, we can also see that the story of the Judges, the Book of Judges, is going to illustrate the events that have occurred in this movement. Now, when we do that, we know also that there is, there's these different levels or zooming in or zooming out. So we know that there is this Sunday law that's still future. And we know that we haven't actually reached the midnight waymark 
of that line that goes from 9-11 to the Sunday loss. So the line that Jeff really last finished with was the line from 9-11 to the Sunday law, except that he started taking November 9th and July 18th and believing that those were going to be the midnight and the midnight cry waymarks of that line. But as we passed through those waymarks, we came to recognize that we weren't even at the waymarks that we had set up, set ahead of us yet, that we were in typical waymarks. That is, we what we experienced with November 9th and July 18th definitely were not midnight in the midnight cry of that line. Right? Is is that clear to everyone? Even though even though we marked 9-11 as Raffia and believed that July 18th was going to be Paneum, we can see that we have not come to the Raffia and Paneum that we were expecting. Correct. Right. So that means that we were zoomed into a way mark on that line. And, and we still haven't fully decided where that is because we haven't sorted out all these lines yet. But what we can see is that when it comes to November 9th and July 18th, they, they do represent uh, way marks. That they're, they're not just, you know, wrong dates, that they actually are way marks, but they're way marks of a line that is a zoom into some other line. But even within those way marks, in November 9th, we can construct a line itself because in every way mark, we can zoom in and see a line. And I'm saying that Judges 6 is a line that is a zoom into November 9th. Judges 7 is a line that is a zoom into July 18th. And Judges 8 is a line that is a zoom into December 25th, 2021. Right? And, 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 and it's going to become really evident as we start to look at this, because we're going to see what happens, this, this line. I mean, we could say, we could just say, well, this, this whole line, Judges 6, 7, and 8, is, is um, and, and that's why I, I still don't see how this would be the arrival formalization and empowerment. So, because that doesn't fit with what I just said. But it does fit with the idea that um, Judges 6 is 9-11, Judges 7 is July 18th, and Judges 8 is December 25th, 2021. And, and then when we look at this, we can see how the symbols of November 9th are clearly marked here, but it does have July 18th in its symbol, right? But it's, you know, we have June 27th, right? That's the 627 verse, right? Which is a date that's three weeks before July 18th. And, and in a sense, it leads us up to uh, this test, this sign of the fleece that we still you know, uh, have, have ideas about. But then, um, and I think this is bringing us to, um, so when we get to chapter seven, so here we're going to have this division, the 300. And so this would uh, specifically refer to July 18th, right? Now we're going to have the defeat of Midian in July 18th. But then we have uh, Gideon defeats Zeba and Zalmunna. And this really illustrates the, the history around uh, December 25th, right? Especially when we get to the, F, the end of it, Gideon's ephod and so forth. So, so that fits perfectly with that idea. And, and, and so we're going to have to go through that again and illustrate these lines. Any thoughts on what I'm saying, if this makes sense or doesn't make sense to people? <clears throat> I think that <clears throat> I believe the clarity of what you're saying is going to become more relevant once we begin putting this onto lines. Right. Yeah. I mean, cause I I've done it in my head. I haven't drawn it out yet, but right. Um, but yeah, I, cause when we were struggling with it, I was trying to figure this out. Um, and it just, once, once, I, once the idea came into my head, I could clearly see it. I mean, everything just fell into place for me. 
Um, but we do have in every line, we do have an arrival of a message of formalization and empowerment. I think the, the, the big point that I was driving at on Thursday is all of this gives us an interrelation with the messages of Revelation 14 and 18 so that we can more clearly show just how important that message is. There are many, even within, within the corporate church, that while they pay lip service to the three angels message, they don't understand what it is. And they don't understand what it, how important it is. Mm -hmm. But when you have the elements of exactly that message being shown in this type of a situation with Gideon and the oppression of is that had happened with Israel at that time, we can then tie this directly to what we have been seeing within the within the church and within the movement. Right, because we know that what the movement is experiencing is typical of what is going to occur. Right. And, but yet this is internal within this movement itself. Now, we also saw that even with, um, when we dealt with Deborah and Barak and Sisera, we clearly see that, that what happened with Parminder's group was typical of what's going to happen within Adventism. Right, you're going to see a church that will turn 180 in its belief and, and follow the world while believing that they are witnessing to the world. Right. And and so you know, we, we experienced something that was really quite shocking to see conservative Adventists turn completely away from God, the belief that there is no Sunday law, and that the issues of the LGBTQ and women's rights and Black Lives Matters are are the issue of the Sunday law. That that the Sunday law was just typifying that, and we need to stand for for these people's rights, right? That I mean, that was crazy. But the church is going to do the same thing, not necessarily on those issues, but believing that it's it's doing good and. And yet buying into the Sunday law, seeing the Sunday law is a good thing because it's somehow witnessing to, to others, right? And, and spirit of prophecy statements and Bible statements will be taken out of context uh, to support that. Maybe they'll even use dispensational arguments or whatever it is. But um, we know that's what's happening in this movement presently has typified the Sunday law. And, and to understand that fully, to understand what the significance of Judges 6 is, how we put that on the line, and Judges 7 and Judges 8, um, to me, it just it fits so nicely. So we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to draw this out. Anybody else have thoughts on this so far? Does it, we just need to go straight to drawing it out and then uh, seeing how it fits together? Uh, what I'll do is I'll first go here to what we were doing on my PowerPoint. <clears throat> I'll probably go to the whiteboard too, because it's easier to work with. But so remember we took this and we took, um, uh, this is Judges 6. And, and this led us to July 18th with these other way marks being marked, March 27th, 2021 a mark of the Sunday law, and December 26, 2021. Now, if we think about our lines, so I'm just going to, well, you know, do this, I copy this and modify this a bit. Hopefully people can see this well. So when, when we look at our, our normal lines that we would have for this 777 days, 
So remember, we have from November 9th, uh, 2019, right? That's going to be our 777 days to December 25th, 2021. Now, notice here that, of course, we have this message. This is the first angel's message, the prophet from November 9th, 1989 to September 11th. And then we're showing that in the story of Gideon, these two way marks align. They merge together. They're an inversion of each other, a mirror of each other. So that means that this line of Judges 6, verse 11, that is marking 9-11, um, it is illustrating this history from November 9th, 2019 to December 26, 2021 or on, right? So can okay. we say that, that, okay, you have a couple? No, I said okay. Okay, yeah, So, so we can see then that this December 26th, now what these are, are these are these studies that we did. So March 7th, 2021, we're going to begin the study of examining the foundation. And then on December 26th, 2021, we're going to begin this study, understanding the lines. Now, the thing about March 6th, 7th is it's a day after March 6th. Now, we had marked March 6, 2021, because it's a symbol of um, it's a symbol of um, um, Pentecost, right? Now, Rand, do you remember specifically how we had marked it? I mean, I could look at some of my other charts, but. How did we mark what? March 6, 2021. We had marked it for some reason. Um, well, the only thing I remember from that day is you had done a presentation, I think. Yeah, I've done a presentation on March 6. Um, I'd have to look it up. But it, it, it is a Sabbath, right? So there was a presentation that was done, but there was also part of a structure. So I'd, I'd have to look at that. But the point is, it's the day after that that we begin this new series, right? So on the Sunday, we begin this new series of examining the foundation. So there was something about that date as how it fit in with the structure that we had. I just don't remember how that fit in. Um, and I believe that... Uh, uh, Daniel Vanderhorst had had marked it for some reason, so there was part of his structures that that marked that date. But anyway, we have the next day, and of course we have um, December twenty sixth. Of course, is the day after our line ends. So you know, my suggestion that the fleece here are marking the end of this line. Well, that would have to be marking really the Sunday law, right? The symbol that we had is that December 25th, 2021 was the Sunday law, right? We had March 27th, 2021. Of course, this is uh, <coughs> three three weeks prior, you know, because it's starting on Sunday and it's gonna end on March 27th. So it's 21 days inclusive. And then we have this July 18th. But you can see that the focus here in chapter 6 is this preparing of this offering and these tests. And we can see how that fits in with November 9th as being this. Um, if, we, if we wanted to put this in some way, right, we would look at the seven, 777 days. Uh, November 9th is the arrival of the second angel's message. That is, we align this up. It was because Pentecost is the sixth day of the third month, and it was the third month, sixth day. Yes, that's one of the reasons. So it's a symbol of Pentecost. Iran just put a note on there. Um, 
so so we know that this then is the arrival of the second angel because that's what se September 11th represents and and that's you know so we do that with judges 611 and then we have these other events uh, June 21st and June 22nd, the publishing of the tennis, the, the ad in the Tennessean, and then that what happens there with, so, so we could call this like a formalization of the message or something like that. Correct? I could see it. Okay. Now, maybe even a formalization mixed with an empowerment of some sort, but, um, when we get to these other dates, we can see that they're not really the prominent focus of Judges chapter six, in the sense that Judges chapter six is dealing with really about November 9th and what follows. And when we get to Judges chapter seven, because that's what we're going to do here, is we're going to put Judges chapter seven on this line. So we're going to line it up. However, we're going to do that, I don't know exactly. But uh, Judges set chapter seven is going to go on this line. Now, when we, so if we go back to the scriptures here. And we look at Judges seven. Um, um, so the, so they're going to be dealing with the, uh, the Midianites, right? So he had he'd been doing these tests. Are we going to be prepared to stand against the Midianites? Are you going to lead us? Are you with us? But now we're going to have this this group of people who are going to be whittled down, right? Is the way that I look at it. We can see that this is a refinement of the message, but we have some symbols here. So first, we're going to have. Um, 22,000 and 10,000. So that means we have 32,000 uh, people that come to, to support Gideon, right? Correct. And, and But we have two different symbols, 22,000, which is a symbol of restoration. Uh, those people are going to, to return, Right. Now, therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And they returned of the people, 22,000. So, you know, you have two, over two-thirds of the people leave, and 10,000 remain. Now, we could look at this separation in different ways. We could take this separation and place it back at 9-11. Or 11 9, I mean, right? We, we could place this at November 9th. Because in we have in this movement a separation that occurs. Right? Right. And, and, and that's where I would tend to want to put it. So that's why I was saying before this is a repeat and enlarge. So if we go to Judges, um, so if we if we're going to put this on a line, um, we would take this this separation of Judges seven three. So that's where I'm going to put it. Uh, so I'll switch the screens here so you can see this. So here I'm just going to say this is Judges seven three. Now in this case I'm going to get rid of September eleventh. And I'm just going to put November 9th here. Um, in that this is not so much focused upon November 9th. Because here we have November 9th, 1989. And so maybe what I could do is just simply do this. And... Just get rid of that completely. We'll just have November 9th here. Get rid of this. And so this is focusing upon this separation that happens at November 9th within this movement. 
So we're going to have, I'm just going to keep that box there. I was going to put 22,000, 32,000. So there we have it. 32,000 minus 22,000 equals 10,000. So now we have 10,000, but this is going to be a separation that occurs. So if we're going to put what, what occurs here after the 10,000 are separated, how would we characterize this? Well, wouldn't we see this as three successive tests? Yes, right. So we're going to have a three-step, three test, a three-step testing prophetic message. So, right. so we're going to have this separation. So you're going to have first. So the first test, that's going to be November 9th, two thousand nineteen. So what's the second? What what's the second test? How are we going to characterize? What's happening? Where are we going to mark that? <clears throat> well, okay. Isn't the first test the call to see who is going to join that results in the 32,000? And then the second is God saying there's too many you need to reduce. Okay. So if you want to put the call as the first so leave your leave your judges seven three there. I am. I'm just copying this. Okay. And I'm going to put this September seventh. Okay. Then we're we're on the same page. Okay. And this is going to be the call itself um, is actually going to happen in in chapter six. Right. Right. So, um, well. Where is the call specifically? Um, that's 635, right? I believe so. Okay, so so that's where we would put that. So we're going to go um, Judges 635. So it's just going to be at the end of this chapter that we have this call before the sign of the fleece. But we're going to put the call there, right? And... And so we can see that in that call and then the sign of the fleece, um, that that is going to be covering this history, right? So there, there's going to be this overlap of these lines because that's what you happen happens when you zoom in. Waymarks in one line uh, become a waymark in another line. Now, isn't it interesting when we're when we're looking at this that? we have this other symbol in Judges 6.33. Okay. Um, okay, so what specifically are you talking about? I'm speaking as the verse reads, then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. <clears throat> so you have a, basically you have three confederated groups. So in looking at this line as we are, Gideon is now being called to come out against those that would symbolize the beast, the dragon, and the false prophet. Okay. So when this call is being made, those of the messengers that, that were sent, that went throughout all of Manasseh, oh. mm -hmm and messengers that went into Asher and Zebulun and Naphtali come up with 32,000 men. Okay. <clears throat> so you have 
this huge force that 32,000 are now going to be that are now going to come out to meet. So by putting this on the November or on the September 7, <clears throat> you have a a call that is being made that results in November 9th with the 32,000. And then God said that there are yet too many and they have to be tested to see how this is, is going to play out. Okay. So, so now when we look at this, and this is what people are going to have to try to, to understand, when we look at the line above, remember we have July 18th, is Judges 34. That's the blowing of the trumpet, correct? Right. But now we're going to take the symbol that happens in Judges 34, and we're going to take Judges 33 to 35, and we're going to place it at September 11th. September 11th or September 9th? Pardon me. September 7th, I meant. Okay, sorry. September right. 7th, 2019. Got it. Right? So we're placing it there, and in so doing... Uh, we're now taking this message because this line is now about July 18th. The previous line was about November 9th. It still has July 18th in its line, but July 18th is further down the line. Right? Right. Because this is a zoom into November 9th. It's about November 9th. Now, this one's going to be about July 18th. But notice we still have to go back because... It's going to be in connection with um, this this army of you know it's it's about the Sunday law because we know July eighteenth is <clears throat> we look at it as the Battle of Panean but it, it's still going to have connected to it this pandemic right Panean yeah. pandemic right so now we have Judges six verse thirty three to thirty five and we're marking it as September seventh because there is a call that really happens. At that time, that is, um, the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet and Ebiezer was gathered after him. Now, Ebiezer, what does his name mean? Right, so this is the father of help, right? I believe that's correct. Okay. Now. Um, or the father is helpful. Right. And um, so what what happens on September 7th that's connected to July 18th? <clears throat> Doesn't Jeff stand back up after his retirement to give another message? Right. So, so we now have this this help that comes to us because of. So we have the message of July 18th, and in the the message of July 18th is aided by Jeff. If Jeff hasn't come, uh, the movement's not going to accept July 18th. Right. Right. I mean, there's already so much opposition to it. So without Jeff, who we're going to say is represented here by the father of help. The message now can go forward. Right. And then he's going to send these messengers. Right. So we know that this message now is going to go forward the message of July 18th and on November 9th. And, and we talked about this, how there is this, this separation that occurs with November 9th and, and the separation that occurs isn't just the people that first leave though. It is part of that, right? Cause you're going to have this, but cause you're going to have Parminder's group leaving, but here on November 9th, there are many people who are not willing to accept time setting. Right. 
Correct. And so they're not going to participate in the July 18, 2020 prediction, even though they've rejected Parminder. Would we agree with that? They don't want to have anything to do with any type of time setting. That's the basic idea. I think that's kind of clear, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so now we have 10,000 left. But this 10,000 is going to be whittled down. Now, I mean, we could just say the whittling down occurs at July 18th. But you can see we have in above us here, we have some, some events that happen. And there are specifically uh, way marks that we can take from, from the scriptural passages. So if we go to chapter seven here of Judges again. So... In verse three, you know, he proclaims in the ears of the people saying, whosoever was fearful. But then in verse four, Judges seven, verse four, the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So what does it mean to bring the people down to the water as a symbol? Where are we brought down to the water? What is this test? Well, the symbols of water have been peoples. Okay. But what other symbols do we have? What, uh, what other symbols could we apply here? Well, I, I think peoples would be one because, you know, what is the attitude of the two different groups? What is it that distinguishes them? One is willing to follow scripture and scripture alone. The other is more willing to push an interpretation based more upon what man has said rather than God. Okay. So, so we have a group that's going to put its mouth down to the water just like a dog. Right. So they're going to go down, put their mouth in the water and drink from the water. And that's going to be, of course, the vast, vast majority because only 300 aren't going to do that. So what is this symbolizing? I mean, we, we, we can take this as the story that, you know, you have this one group that's alert. You know, they're not, not going to put themselves in a situation where they can't see the enemy, right? They're getting right. alert, so they bring the water up to their mouth. They're sort of alert, watching as they're drinking, right? Where the other group is oblivious to what's around them, just puts their mouth down to the water. Um, so, so we could look at it in that, that sort of practical sense of the story of why he would separate them. Could it be that they uh, followed the ones that um, what worried about those things around us was stupid in true faith? Okay, well, what about the bowing down upon the knees? What would that represent in this context? Worship? Yeah, worship, okay. So we have worship. And, and, it, and if, if the water represents the the people, who are they worshiping?
Yeah, right. And there you have it. Yeah. So isn't this really an acknowledgement of the world? We're compromising and worshiping the world. Yeah. Yeah. It helps push that perspective. That's the thing. Yeah. And then you have, of course, this other group that brings the water up to their mouth. Right. They're not bowing down. And those are going to be the 300. And God is going to deliver them from the Midianites, who we understand to be this strife. Um, with that message. So it's the message of the 300. So if we look at this line that we had already, we can see that if we took the publication of the Tennessean, can we line that up with judges um, with this test of the lapping up of the water? Actually, sounds like it might fit. Okay. <clears throat> so this would be um, we're going to look at the verses I'm going to switch to the screen here so so you're going to have this uh, test it's going to start so Judges 4 to Judges 7-7 seven, seven. so Judges 7-4 to Judges 7-7 seven, seven. so so, uh, seven four. I'm going to say seven four. Well, to seven. So this is going to be ten. 10,000 minus oops, 9,700 equals 300. Right? Right. So we're going to have a 300 that are going to be there. So this is this is how uh, Dwight's doing this, because he's going to put these three tests here. Now, see, I would tend to be prone to put the 300 after July 18th. But and I haven't put what this is. Can you explain why? Oh. Well, I know. To me, that's where I see always saw the separation. July 18th ended up, you know, bringing about this separation, this 300. Yeah. yeah. But but anyway, so we're we're gonna we're gonna do it this way here for now, and we'll have to think about it. So now we're going to have July 18th. Now, July 18th, then, if we're going to take this and follow this through, um, so, I, I mean, I'm going to put, uh, okay, so the people, so if we go to verse 8, so in, in verse 7, we know, the Lord said unto Gideon, by 300 men that lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the people go, every man into his place. So the people took the vittles in their hand and their trumpets and set all the rest of Israel, every man, into, unto his tent and retained those 300 men. The host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou shalt fear to go down, go thou with uh, Pura, thy servant down to the host and thou shalt hear what they say and afterward thine hands shall be strengthened to go down unto the host then went down with Pura his servant 
unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number, as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, uh, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it, that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon and the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with enemy with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look unto me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be as I do that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. So this is going to bring us to the July 18th date. So um, so we're going to put this as 718. Now we have all of this that happens in between. So now here I have Judges 627 and we have the June 27th date, but we're going to have something else marked here prior to uh, July 18th. Okay, why why couldn't this one that's prior to July 18th, why couldn't that be Gideon and Pura going down to the camp? That, well, that is. Okay, but the, the other part of that, wouldn't that also, since that that was prophetic and also in Gideon's mind, kind of a miracle. Why couldn't that be the return of the money from the advertisement? Uh, well, because I mark it some other way. Okay. All right. <laughs> so that's Judges 710. So Judges 710 is July 10th. Okay. What's the significance of July 10th, 2020, as a prophetic marker? How did we mark July 10th? Why, why do I mark it? Well, outside of the fact that uh, 710 lines up with Judges 710. Okay, well, yeah, and, and the 10th day of the seventh month. Right, which is Day of Atonement. So it's a symbol of the Day of Atonement. We know that. Uh, it, Wasn't it's that the, a symbol. the article came out? Um, June 21st. Oh, my bad. This is July 10th. Um, I have a chart with this, and you'll see why here in a minute as soon as I find it. Um, What you see here might be a little bit confusing. Let's see if I can. Um... Okay, so how do I go about this study? Um, maybe I can do it. Find it here. Here it is. This is better. <clears throat> so this was the study that I had done that I sent Jeff on April 26th. 2020. Uh, it's got a little more detail than in the original study that I sent him. Um, but, but this is basically what I sent him. Now, what I had done is I'd taken this Mayan calendar and I'd come to understand some things about it. So I came to understand that the Mayan calendar has these back, -back tunes that are 144,000 days. And that um, we, we can use the Mayan calendar and the Islamic calendar together in this structure. Now, what I had done is I had gone to the end of the 391 years 
and I had used this Mayan calendar. So I, I don't want to go into too much detail to try to explain it uh, here because I have studies on it. But I'm going from July 27th, 1840. And I'm going to count. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, one-tenth of this period of time, this 142,810 days. And then I'm going to take uh, one twelfth of it times five. And then I'm going to find the number of days. So I calculate the number of days um, based on this. And that number of days um, is going to bring me to, let me see if this makes sense, uh, July 18th. Um, this doesn't look right. Looks like I have some, something that doesn't make sense here. Um, so this one here uh, should actually not bring me to July 18th. It should bring me here. Whoops. Um, okay, never mind. That's correct. I'm talking about this time here. So if you look at this, I'm going to zoom in. <clears throat> So it gives me this number of days, 65,445 days. Now, when I did this calculation, it was actually on October 10th that I did this calculation here, October 10th, 2019, that I had done this part of it. Um, and so this, this is actually, so this I had figured out in October. So there was actually other things that I sent Jeff uh, back, back into 2020, but um, so anyway, this 65,454 days brings me to October 11th, 2019, and that's 273 days before July 10th, Gregorian. And then I did another calculation. I took the by the the back tune of 144,000 days, and I took um, I divided it by 12 times five plus, so I did the same thing that I did here, plus 144,000 divided by 10 divided by 12 plus five. So I take this period of the 391 years and I take this period of one back two and I do the same calculation. And the calculation I get here is 66,000 days. Now, if I count from that same July, 8, July 27th, 1840, it's going to bring me to April 9th, 2021, which is March 27th, 2021, Julian. And that's going to be 273 days after July 10th. So what this does is it makes July 10th the center of these two dates, October 11th, 2019, and April 9th, 2021. And so I had marked this. So this was actually in 2019. So this is not even the fail. I was, getting confused with the other one. I'm going to use the Mayan, calen late Mayan calen calendar later to show Jeff that our prediction is failing. But this one is just pointing out July 10th. So Jeff is going to respond to this. He's going to do some presentations about this July 10th date. Okay. So um, when we go back to our lines there that we were drawing, was. I can't see what I'm looking at. So we're, we're going to go back to these lines. That's why I put July 10th here. Now, what is July 10th then marking? So if we have this July 10th, and I'm taking as Judges 10, in the verse itself, what, what is it talking about? Uh, Dwight, what were your thoughts on that? How would we match this up with July 10th based on what you have understood? Well, I was asking if this wasn't the, the confirmation that had been allowed when Gideon and Pura went down by the Midianite camp. 
Okay, so, so we're going to mark this as July 10th. So we're going to take from July 10th this symbol. Sorry, David. And that's going to be that basically a week and one day prior to July 18th. Right? Right. Okay, and we're saying that this is... So what is happening in the movement at this time that we can parallel with this... This event, this dream, that's dream, that's that's overheard, etc. I'm not recalling it easily. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now we know that. Uh, Jeff does present on July 11th, right? Right. So, so we can connect Pura here with July 11th as well. Thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hand be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. So, now Pura... The name means uh, foliage, right? That's uh, the definition that we get from Strong's. Or means bow. That's from uh, Brown's Drivers Briggs. Um, and it says from 86286, eight, properly ornamentation, that is foliage, including the limbs as bright green, brow, bow, branch, sprig. So how would this apply to what we're talking about? Ura. So something goes along with Gideon to the enemy camp with this bow, this branch, this sprig. Right. So if we look at the places where this word is used, um, it just takes a second for my computer to respond here. Um, looking at the King James Concordance. It only is used here in Judges 7, verse 10 to 11. That is the name part of it. But we had the other number was, uh, it was from 6. What was the number that it was from? So we'd have to look at the, the number that it's related to. 6288. So it goes way back here. So six two eight eight, and it's also related to six two eight six, to glean, to embellish, etc. But if we go to this uh, word here, six two eight eight, and and look at the concordance, let's see what other verses that we have that would connect us to it. So we got Ezekiel 31, 5 to 6. Um, Therefore his height was exalted above the trees of the field. His, his boughs were multiplied. His branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. And all the fowls of the heaven made their nests in his boughs and under the branches did the beasts of the field bring forth their young. And under his shadow dwelt all great nations. So what is it referring to here? In Ezekiel 31. Well, it would seem to be re referring to something that God is providing. Well, yeah. Well, this was, if you go to Ezekiel 31, uh, this is about Pharaoh. Okay. Um, and, and uh, well, no, it's actually about Assyrian, the Assyrian here, because it's going to be talked about uh, the death of Pharaoh. Uh, but the one that's going to provide that is, is the Assyrian. So behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon, right? So this is, this is very parallel 
to um, uh, Daniel chapter four, right? Dealing with Nebuchadnezzar, right? We should be able to see those parallels readily. And um, the other one, so this is the first time, is um, Deuteronomy 24. When thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. So here it's going to be used in the context of uh, not over gleaning your crops, but those need to be left for others. Right. Okay. And we have it in Isaiah 10, 33. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts shall lop the bow with terror and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down and the haughty shall be humbled. And we also have it in Ezekiel 17, 6. So again, it's going to be, um, it's there, it's going to be translated as sprigs. It grew and became spreading vine, low stature, whose branches turned toward him, and roots thereof were under him. So it became a vine and brought forth branches and shot forth sprigs. And, and this is going to be the parable of the two eagles and a vine. Right. <clears throat> So, which we've gone through. So this is going to be um, a parable against God's people. So what does that tell us about Judges? Does it tell us anything about Judges chapter 7, um, verse 10 and 11, about Pura? If we're going to distill it down to a symbol, what would the symbol be? Because it has both positive and negative connotations. Right. The connotations, I mean, given that there are, are seven verses for the derivative of Pura, as, as you were just reading through some of them, yeah, we're looking at something that is more giving of support or giving of shelter. Yeah. Well, and also we can relate it to the word uh, here, which is pa'ar, right? Um, which has to do with glorify, beautify, adorn, right? So that's the idea of what his name means. So it does mean branches, but it also has to do with this adorning. Right. To be glorified. And and then one of its, its uh, forms as a verb means to go over the boughs, which is actually to glean, right? So, and if we look at these uh, different words here, the different way that this is translated, uh, again, we see it in um, Isaiah 44. Um, in other so words, sustenance for the remnant, as you're bringing out this on gleaning, yeah, and it also has to do with glorify, though, right? So we can see that there's all these things glorifying the Lord. Okay. So so this is really where the word is coming from. So it means adornment. It means a bow. And, and it means to gleam and to shine. So we can see that it, it, it has this really positive connotation. Right? Okay. So, so if we're looking at, we're looking at this as a symbol, we see July 10th, which is symbolizing the Day of Atonement, but we also see it's connected to July 11th, or to chapter 7, verse 11. Um, and when he goes down with Pura, they're going to go into this camp. So thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thine hands be strengthened, 
to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Pura, his servant, unto the house of the armed men that were in the host. So Gideon, the July 18th message, is going down with this other message, which we would call a, a message of glorification. Okay. Now, it's marked out in our lines from a study, from a gleaning of the prophecy that give us, gave us July 18th, 2020 in the first place. Right? Because I'm examining um, the, the period of the second woe and using that as a structure um, based upon the division of that into 12 different periods and taking one-tenth of that. So I don't know if people followed what I was doing there, but I'm taking the period of 142,810 days, that is 391 years, using the biblical span of time, which also lines up with the Gregorian span of time, but using that symbol. And then I'm going to take it and divide it by 12 because the Islamic calendar goes through 12 different cycles in that period where it where Ramadan comes around to the same time on our calendar, right? So it does that 12 times. So I'm taking one twelfth of that. And then I'm going to take one tenth of it, which is a remnant, right? And then I'm also going to take the one twelfth and multiply it by five. So I'm, I'm doing that, which I'm not going to explain, but it has to do with the 0.5 idea. And then I'm going to come up with these number of days, and they're going to create a mirror where... 273 days, it's going to give me a date, 273 days on either side of July 10th. So it's going to give me July 10th as the center. And so July 10th becomes this way mark prior to July 18th. Now, Jeff is going to speak on July 11th for the last time. And, and I think he does two presentations on that date around, correct? I think I, so. Yeah, <clears throat> but he's not going to speak on July 18th. Uh, I think Larry Hine does and uh, someone else. Um, actually, I can find it here really quickly because I have it here. So I'm looking at uh, the FFA chat um, for the 11th. And there was something about a live audience in Arkansas. Uh, they were reminding the camera operator about something. Uh, the Nashville, Jeff put out something on the Nashville Prophecy 2020. Um, it had links to it. Uh, this was something bipolar winter, HTTP, gives a web page. Um, got enough, let's see. Can, can you give me the web page link so I can look it up in uh, the Wayback Machine? Okay, just a second. I'll send it um, over to you. So Jeff does two presentations, number 50 and 51 of Daniel's Last Vision. He does those on July 11th. Okay, so how do you want me to send this email? No, no, just put it in the chat. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, I can't. I'm on. <laughs> I was on my phone. Let, let me let me email it to you. Uh, you have to email it, okay. uh, or I can I you can, can text it. it. You can type it in. Oh, it's a long oh, one. Oh, it's a long one. Eh? Um. All right, it's on its way. Okay. Um, Coming to you later on. Yeah, so anyway, with July, uh, on July 10th, uh, 2020, um, I'm going to have, of course, my Friday night study. And in that study, um, I hate the way that 
YouTube changed where the transcripts are, but anyway. Um, so what the study is that I gave on the 10th is, um, I'm gonna go back to the Civil War, the Battle of Manassas and so forth. That's what the study <laughs> is going to be on. Um, and then I'm also going to address uh, the 13 days from July 4th to July 18th and July 18th to July 31st, that they're 18,720 minutes. Um, and that's pretty much what I think I present. And, and then I'm going to look at these notes. So you sent me, and I also go into uh, the Levitical chiasm that Jeff had done. Right. So I, I go through that thing where he points to March 27th, 2021. Look in your chat, Theodore. Uh, in my chat. That's that. Okay. Yeah, that is pretty long. <laughs> Oops. Okay, and then I just put this into the Wayback Machine. Sorry about the time it takes to do this. That's okay. Um, so I didn't see anything on the 10th, really. Uh, in the chat, so I do know one thing. They everybody talks a bunch. I mean, I I spent like <laughs> half a minute just going through one day at high speed. You know, <laughs> it was it was long. Yeah, but the tenth, there's hardly anything on here at all, and the eleventh, there's not too much either. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, so we're going to have to go back. It says this page is available on the web. So maybe if I just type it in, what does it give me? Well, it gets a Nashville Prophecy 2020. It's it's actually a, a bipolar winter is the people that are the people that uh, are posting it. Um, the following is a look at the teachings of 15 minute video okay so it was um and culture behind the doomsday predictions that have been I, I, circulating stop it there okay so this is going to be this looks like something that somebody had uh, presented um uh, as a rebuttal or you know doomsday prediction okay but, here's what they said even though we do not agree with jeff pippinger and future for america we understand they are following the admonitions of the teachings they espouse. We believe, understanding the Adventist teachings and culture, that those trying to warn Nashville of Ellen White's prophecy are doing so from a position of concern and duty. They believe they are following the directive of their prophet, who specifically told the church it is to warn Nashville. The Seventh-day Adventist church has a history of undermining the integrity and attacking the credibility of anyone trying to persuade the organization to disclose the truth of its teachings and its sanitizing of controversial doctrine. We're now witnessing the church attacks on Jeff Pippinger and Future for America because they are revealing the Adventist church's prophecy that the earth and its population will shoot, soon be destroyed by fire. So, so they don't, it's not necessarily an attack, um, uh, but definitely it, uh, uh, they believe that Nashville is going to be attacked. So, and it's, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so somebody named Bipolar Winter is their YouTube page. Now, now we bring all this up because our, our point is to try to look at July 10th, but we can see that July 10th and 11 are tied together. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So yes. this Pura is there. So if we're going to put this on the line properly, we would say uh, judges 
chapter 10, 7, verse 10 to 11. And I just have to do this. And July 10th and 11th, 2020, right? So we got that one week uh, prior to July 18th. And, and of course, you know, the studies are, are going to be Friday night, which uh, I think that the sun will have set, uh, you know, long after the study is over. So, so it's te technically on, on the, the different, the, these are two different biblical dates. And then we're going to have July 18, 2020. So that's going to be seven to eight days later. And we're going to use Judges 7 verse 8 for that. Okay, does that make sense to people? Uh, so what are we really marking on July 10th? We, we have the, the prediction of the Mayan calendar that is, is tying us to July 18th. Um, we have Jeff's final message to this movement, really, right? Because he's not going to speak again after that. Correct? Yes, correct. Okay. It's interesting. I found a, a, a chat that said, no Zoom today, technical issues by Larry Hine. For, that was for the 11th. For the 11th, they didn't have a Zoom. Yeah, I think you might be correct. Um, well, it, sa it says that. I'm going further to see if they correct it or anything. But Well, I think what I think is they didn't do the Zoom. They did do live on YouTube. But remember, they did the live YouTube feed, and then they they would have Zoom as well. So you, right. you, you didn't have to go on Zoom to be uh, to watch the meetings. You could watch it live on a live stream on YouTube. Uh, I do have a, a Zoom meeting here from Larry Heim. Um, okay. It did go out at eleven o two. Okay, so eleven o two. So we we do see a we do see the at least the invite is there. Okay. So they did get uh, the Zoom up and going. Okay. <clears throat> they were talking about the guy that uh, put up that video. Um, they named him by name. He has a he's an ex SDA gentleman. You don't know who he was. Um, I can give you the name. The, uh, one of the girls wrote his name out because of the. Uh, I guess it's the channel. Okay, so I, I wrote out, how did you determine what his name was? His name was, sorry, I'm moving up a little bit. Uh, Samuel. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who he is. Okay, so anyway, what we have here is we have um, we have the 300 being separated, and then we have this Gideon and Pura going down to the camp of the Midianites, and they're going to hear a dream. So what is this dream re representing? Would we have the dream represent this understanding of this vision? I'm sorry. Uh I missed that. What did you say? Dream. Is it the understanding of this vision that marks July 10th? Or is there something else there that that we don't see? Because they're going to go down into the camps of the Midianites. And there was a man who told a dream unto his fellow. And he said, behold, I dreamed a dream. Right. Now, of course, these are two different words, but they're related to the same word. One is the verb and the other is the noun. Right. So they often say, I dreamed a dream. You don't just say, I dreamed. Um, you usually say, I dreamed a dream. Okay. Now we have a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian. So this is what the person who dreamed the dream saw and came onto the tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. So what is this cake of barley bread? It's the 
wasn't barley with the 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 lowest of the uh, of the food chain was comprised with? No, it's not the lowest, but I mean, it's 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 not the most desirable grain, but it's definitely uh, one of the main things that people ate. I mean, locusts would probably be a lower form on the food chain there. That is the plant, carob. There was a second meeting uh, at 245. Another. Yeah, uh, that's the second meeting. So Jeff will do presentations. I mean, the first time barley is mentioned in this form of this word is uh, Exodus 9.31. And the flax in the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bold. So, um, so here's just about the barley um, in the ear that's in the, during the plagues. Um <clears throat> Now, this is, of course, barley bread, the chem, and they tumble into the host of Midian, right, into the middle of the camp. That's in this dream, right? And it smote a tent, that it fell and overturned it, that the tent lay along. So the, the, the tent's going to be marked flat. So or, or hit and, and made flat, right? It's overturned and flattened. That's what they mean that the tent lay along. Okay. So what is this? I mean, who is what is being represented here? Hmm? house right a, a what a tent a tent is a house well yeah it's it's a dwelling but here in this context yeah it's it the word is uh a tent covering a home a tabernacle a tent right right yeah it's one six eight which is a symbol of the week yes number of hours right yeah number of hours in a week We're getting to an interesting point now, so very close to the end of our time today. Yeah. Now, even when you look at uh, at this video, so it's kind of interesting. You have this video of somebody not particularly in this movement. I mean, they're not behind Jeff Pippinger in FFA. But they bear witness to the truthfulness essentially of the message that's being given, correct? Mm, yes. So, so would it refer to this, this person, uh, this person's testimony? It's entirely possible. I mean, I don't know. It's just. Okay. So I got, I found a few more things. Uh, uh, Stephen um, had sent in a whole bunch of, of uh, quotes uh, at the request of Bronwyn. Uh, yeah. And that were all on the July 18th stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really see anything else that's marking this. I can hear something from Dwight. Yeah, but it's mostly this, this, this video. Yeah, that's and, and uh, there's a lot of going back and forth about the video. Um, there's some stuff about Alex Jones here too, but uh, you know they 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 run the gambit, that's for sure. What is, what is this coming off of? This is coming off the WhatsApp uh, chat for the uh, Future for America. 
on July 11th, 2020. Yeah, the 11th and the 10th and the 11th. So they still got that up. Uh, well, this yeah. is this is just something that I have in my phone before they kicked me out. Once they kicked me out, I I, I hadn't received any more. Uh, yeah, if you were on that chat, you can still you that's right be able to access it. Yeah. If you were on it at that time, you should still be able to get it unless you okay. wipe it out. All right. Brian was, you know, um, talking about a uh, a star uh, or a comment that had uh, came around, and Stephen, I guess it was Stephen that that uh, made him aware of this. Now I gotta find it. Seemed about the only other interesting thing. That I and you have to use your phone, like so. It would be on my phone. If yeah, if you've got the Future for America chat, it, it's on your phone. Yeah, if you if you didn't change your phone, if you didn't change it, or if you didn't delete, delete it. Yeah. Okay. It's anyway, we got, we got to end here. So, um, so we're we're gonna have to come back to this tomorrow, but. Uh, you know, we might we might revive revise some of this. We might uh, change our mind on some things, but uh, that's where we are. So let's uh, close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we again are so thankful for the time that we have uh, to study. We know that we are struggling uh, to understand these things fully, and so we just pray for your Holy Spirit to be with us throughout this day as we contemplate the things we are studying. Um, we pray for those in this movement um, who, who are um, seeking to know the truth, but may be misled in some ways. And that can include all of us. So we ask, Lord, that you can lead and guide us. Forgive us for our sins and help us to trust in you fully. In your righteousness, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.